Hey, what's going on, guys? It's me, Train Man, and welcome back to the Zombie Train episode, whatever this is. I'm having trouble with the map here right off the bat. Okay, so this week we're going back to work on the Drumlin Field and on the cliffs, on the bluffs. And that's something we'll get to at the very tail end of the episode, the last couple of minutes. So what I'm doing right now is using a smaller tool to kind of flatten this out because I refuse to use anything, uh, I refuse to use the regular old... Uh, you know, elevation due to spline points for the two-foot gauge, because the two-foot gauge is supposed to be wonky. It's not supposed to be straightforward. It is supposed to be odd. And, of course, cheaply made, as I talked about last... Excuse me, last episode. So this episode, though, we make it... We take the terraining all the way to the border, and by the border I mean Worcester, which is the town in the middle. We are yet to build trackage to what's currently called Blindside Bluff, but may need changing for confusion's sake. And other than that, we build a drumlin field and a cliff. Now, those of you that don't remember what drumlins are, they are kind of elongated mountains that uh, are left over from when glaciers pass over. And so they're they're kind of steep at one side where the ice was pushing against, and they're long at the other end, and they're thin, and they kind of point in the direction that the glacier was heading uh, at the time of their creation. So we've got this drumlin field, or I'm starting to work on this drumlin field. I start making them larger. If you look up a topography map of a drumlin field... Uh, and then see what this looks like at the end. You may be... I, I was kind of impressed with myself, because it turned out pretty well. And I started designing my track work to, um... What's the word? To match up with where the drumlins will be pointing. We're also going to have a, uh... A terminal moraine down at the beach. And... What's the word? An esker. Are we going to have an esker? I don't think we're going to have an esker, actually. Uh, this is all stuff I've been learning about in, in uh, geology. I'm just kind of excited to be able to use the terminology. So, again, we're just building these elongated mountains. We have a few uh, kettle lakes. Uh, well, they're not... I don't think they're actually kettle lakes. Uh, but they're lakes that we just tossed in it in between these drumlins as we get farther along here. So... I... did I do the track work on camera? I don't think I did. Yeah, I don't think I did the track work for Worcester on camera. There were a few things that I decided against. I not decided against, I just wasn't running the, uh... wasn't running the camera when I decided to do them. So... So there's that. I mean, I probably should have run the camera, and then I would have had footage for next week, which is something, which is a problem that I'm currently running into, which is not having, uh, I mean, of course, I'll be, okay, here's the basis. I'm on spring break, or I'm going to be on spring break shortly. For next week, I have two out of six videos. That's a problem. I have trained fever for Friday and locomotion for Tuesday. I don't, I haven't been able to round up the guys for uh, the complete the monument, the League of Extraordinary Minecrafters. I need space engineers. Haven't been able to round up the guys for that either. Um, Homeworld and this. So I've got a, I've got my work cut out for me in the coming days. Is my point. So, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do about that, because getting people is, uh, tricksy. Fortunately, the, some of the things just aren't that long, and I can kind of queue stuff up to be processed, and even process raw footage, uh, when I'm not here. Which means that'll save me a lot of time in the long run. Uh, of course, the most pressing thing other than this is the 
podcast, which is coming up on Sunday. And of course that needs to be done before I leave, which will most likely be done. And because once I leave, I can't get it done. I don't have the proper software. So in other words, I ran out of footage before I expected to run out of footage, in a lot of cases, and I'm going to be working double time here. So we've got these, uh, again. Okay, so drumlins, essentially, when you have a drumlin field, you'll have a bunch of these drumlins with the gaps in between them where, where water would have been flowing or has been flowing to erode them. See, I, I, glaciers are astoundingly tall, and I didn't know this until I got into this. Okay, so this is one of the spots I decided to put a lake. Kind of off-the-cuff sort of lake building. You know, part of me wanted to actually extend the Drumlin Field to uh, the north and the south in order to give, uh, you know, give people running on the layout increased perspective, because, you know, I don't like seeing the end of the map. It's not a good thing to be able to see. And in TS-12, you can see pretty far. So, it's, uh, it's worth making a wide area. Like, uh, those of you who have seen it, uh, no, most of you have not, but the viaduct on Lee's line is in the middle of an area that is five or six tiles across. And that's not in the direction the track is going, of course. That's in the... Uh, that's perpendicular to it. So you get this big valley that you can see all the way across. And you can't see the trains on the other side, because they're all hidden behind the uh, behind the trees. Except in a couple select spots, which are bridges over small rivers. But, no, yeah. It's, um... Oh, sorry. It's just the kind of thing where I was... Well, I needed the... I needed to gain elevation anyways, so I needed to have that much track. But I figured I'd coil it all into one spot so that you would have this very wide area that you can see all the way across, and it looks really cool. Uh, at least in terms of, you know, hilly, treed hills that I've made. Which, you know, there aren't very many. But I've been trying to do more prototypes prototype stuff, uh, the geology, or geology has been kind of helping me with what areas like this look like, uh, along with just simply paying attention to what things outside are more like. For, for both the drumlins and the bluffs, I went ahead and looked up a picture, and I could have done it differently. Uh, there was something I wanted to do in the bluffs that really wasn't feasible, and that was have a rock that's taller on top than it is on the bottom. And, you know, this is trained, so that's physically unfeasible. Because you can't make indentations in the side. It's really something I wish you would be able to do, but unfortunately because... Well, it's just not very useful in a lot of cases. You, you'd only use it in a few specific places, like on cliffs with overhangs, or, you know certain very interesting areas. I mean, you could make sort of an otherworldly uh, otherworldly geography with that, but it's not something you'd see commonly, so it's not really something you'd need. Uh, you know, you'd need that much. I think this is when I started to texture this, and I didn't get anywhere from there. I think what's going to happen is we're going to bang out as much of this as we can, and then go ahead and texture it, and then go ahead and attach it, and work from there. By attach it, I mean this, uh, there is stuff to the south, south of Worcester. Sorry. If you go straight south out of Worcester, actually, I'm not sure you, I'm not sure what you'd hit, but there's a track leading south out of Worcester that curves away into the woods, and that's going to be very important because it's not one of our dead ends. Uh, I have made, you know, one more now, uh, as you guys will see. So, it's just, uh, I've been adding these things in, and frankly, I wish I added them in in other, uh, in other 
maps. Uh, not in other, well, yeah, in other maps, but in other uh, sections of my, of, well, whatever. Okay, no, so here's the track work. I, I was hoping I'd get to it. So we're straightening this out, we, we got that straightened, spline point straightened. And so we have this cross here, and I'm really not sure what to do with it. I'm not sure what I want to do with, I get, with it, I guess, is the real struggle. And eventually I settle on building points in almost all four directions. Uh, and scrap that idea real quick. Bring it into there, move the other track over. Adjust that. From here I bring this almost there, but let's say they removed the switch because it wasn't necessary. Then there's the other... Oh wait. No, no, come on. Again, I was confused as to what to do. I need to find the station. I think that's the next thing I did. Oh no, I built this way a little bit. And then I decided that I needed a station. I built off this way. I eventually changed that. And come on, go get the station. Yeah, there I go. Okay, so we got this station here, and this is one of the little CNR ones. I got this one. I mean, it's nice, but it's two tracks, so it's not necessary. And that's not a station. And that is what I go with in the end. I need to find the um, the bluffs station as well, but that'll be something to work on in the future. So now we've got this passing siding that we built here, and you can't, if you've noticed, you can't get to it directly from uh, coming up from the south there. Why? No real reason, that's just the way it is. The other track that leads up there is, is built there so that you can get into the station without backing up and going forwards and what have you. It's basically the, the only sort of reverse loop thing that we have. And so that we had a complete Y somewhere. Although I believe we already had one. So once again, coming in here and adjusting, because we made another little hill. And the gradient on the map tells you the gradient difference between between the spline points. But that isn't really helpful when you haven't uh, brought the splines to a specific elevation, because the tracks aren't strung out between them, as in this... I guess you could say there's no tension on it. So, you have the track fitting the contours of the ground, which may not be the percentage between the two spline points that you are being told it is. So, you've got to go in there and fix that manually. Uh, did I... I didn't reroute this track over here yet, but I will shortly, if I recall correctly. Another little lake. After I, oh yeah, there we go. Stretch it out in both directions so that we have a leg that's sort of pointing in the same direction as the drumlins. You know, obviously, the way the drumlins are set up, there'd probably be multiple ways to get through that little passage that we built the two-foot gauge through, and that's kind of a good point. But that's the one we went through, which is kind of the gist of the two-foot gauge. It's like, this is the path we're taking, it, it won't be difficult to build. It'll be a little bit wonky, but that's just the way it is. Anyways, the final leg, there are three different legs of this that we have to build. We are building the first one right here, of course. The second one is between here and the ocean, which is that final block that we haven't been to, the final name tile. And the third one is by far the longest one. And it runs from... Uh, where we are right now, several miles to the southwest, southeast, rather, and terminates in a town that's already built, but that I don't have on this map, because they aren't connected, to save, or really for sanity's sake. 
Uh, we just don't, you know, we don't need to keep them together just yet. We'll be attaching it shortly, however. Now we've got some excellent drumlins here. I mean, they aren't really as good as they could be. Because I didn't pay attention to which way they were pointing uh, in terms of... Well, not pointing. I didn't pay attention to which was the front end and which was the back end. So I don't know if my topography is completely correct there. It should be steeper on the edge pointing towards the lake and less steep on the edge turning pointing towards the ocean that we haven't built yet. So that's just the way it is. I'm not sure what I'm going to continue on past, uh, plast, plast, past Worcester with. I mean, I may go into more drumlins. I might do uh, some other... Again, this is all a glacial sort of thing. And if you notice, we don't have any rivers running through it. It's just a lot of lakes. Uh, just the way that the ground is kind of prohibits rivers from existing... I had to clear that up because it was on the edge of the map and we were going to be expanding on that edge. So here we are on the bluffs instead. We're using a uh, technique that I haven't used very often, or really at all, which is using the plateau tool to create a slope. That sounds kind of contradictory, but it works, sort of. We eventually settle on... So we have these slopes... See, the thing with, the thing with this town... The uh, whole thing behind it is that it's a sweet beach. Unfortunately, the town sits on the bluff, which is 100 feet above the beach. And that's a long walk down, so there's going to be like roads or stairs or whatever down at the bottom of the beach, uh, down to the beach there. Because otherwise it'd be very difficult to get to. But we come in and we do a lot of these, and it sort of ends up looking like the um, the cliffs have sort of eroded away and have flowed down towards the ocean in um, sort of slabs, I guess. I'm not sure, you know, how well that uh, how well that comes across and the way this looks, but that's sort of what it ended up looking like. Now, there was a point in here where I stopped and looked up bluffs. Because I went, you know, I'm really not... Yep, yeah, that's me going to look up bluffs. Okay, so I came back and went, okay, this cliff is okay. But it just doesn't look good. And then I set out to make it look good. So, aside from anything else, it was just uh, me trying to go... Or really just trying to figure out what I could do to still have it be a cliff and simultaneously have it not look terrible. Because when you build cliffs in trains, they don't tend to look out, they don't tend to look that great, in my experience. Now, I built that thing over there, it kind of bookends this whole area. And I was trying to lower it a little bit because it was a little bit kind of bulgy. And it didn't exactly look great. So, now we've got this cliff, and I'm coming, and I'm trying to kind of break up the monotony of the cliff. Basically in any way I can. So I made this rocky bit down to the bottom, spread along there, you know, using more of the plateau tool. And I regretted doing that. Now, I'm not really sure what kind of anything we're going to be putting on top here, but I, it's safe to assume the drumlins will have terminated a while before this, because we've got to get down from where we were, which was 100 feet up, to uh, to here. Now, we could do that on the heel of a valley, but I don't know how we're going to do that. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all next week. Train Man out.